Gibbs Gaming. Welcome back gamers. This is Chris at Gibbs Gaming and in this video I'm going to be covering a Stamina Nightblade build for the Elder Scrolls Online. This build is set up primarily to work on solo content that can be used for PvE, dungeons and raids, to PvP combat. The thing about this build is it's designed to maybe not crit every time, but when it does, boy howdy will you take some serious damage. So let's get started. With our food buff on, we are going to be sitting at a max magicka of 18,000, health 25,000, and maximum stamina at 32,000. We are playing a Nord just for resistance purposes and a little bit of increased health. Though if you wanted to do this primarily for PvE content, I would highly recommend playing an Orc. With our weapon damage currently is at 3196, weapon critical of 45.1, and physical penetration of 2974. Now I am still working on champion points because they just redone the champion point system. But we are at 810, and I've kind of fiddled with champion points, and I'll explain those in a little bit. Let's cover gear for just a second. We are running Veladreth so that we get poison disease as well as weapon. We are running it as two heavy pieces for increased health. We are running Leviathan Jack for all of our armor pieces in medium armor to get more weapon critical and max stamina. And then we are running Venomous uh, Smite for more weapon critical, weapon damage, as well as inflicting poison damage every 15 seconds for six seconds and we are running that on our front bar with a two-handed axe and our back bar with a bow you can change this up as you see fit there are some other sets that you could do for example uh, defiler if you want a faster proc on poison damage there's pillar of nern if you're wanting to do bleed damage there's two throw if you want to gain savagery at all times increasing weapon critical rating um, there's even for monster set, there's slime claw, which will give you minor berserk, increasing damage done by 5% at all times. So really just kind of play with it, see what you guys want to do. I'm still working on this, trying to figure out precisely what I want to do with it. But this is a very good, powerful setup. So watch our weapon critical here. When we pop our potion, we go from 45.1 to 57 and our weapon damage jumps from 31 to 37 so basically every other hit we are going to be doing crit damage now to cover CP points again they've updated it now uh, to where there are now three primary trees and each one kind of covers something differently just to go with green first uh, I really haven't done much to this. Uh, I'm still trying to investigate it, figure out what I want to do with it. Um, but I put 10 points just so I could go up one into gold fingers. It increases your gold gain by 2% per stage. Eh. Fortune's favor increases the amount of gold you can find in treasure chases and safe box by 10%. Again, meh. Anyway, so we've got uh, Meticulous Disassembly, which helps with crafting. I'm going to go ahead and put that up there. Treasure Hunter, 50 points. Increases uh, quality of items that you find in the treasure chest. I've got Master Gatherer, uh, which reduces gathering time by 50%. And then down here, I've also got Rationer, increases uh, your food intake by 30 minutes. So there's that, confirm. Uh, you're also gaining... Uh, 20% reduction to decay rate for your weapon enchants, which is kind of critical because of the enchants that uh, you can put on weapons now that can do a ton of damage for you. Over into blue, we've got uh, max stamina with our endurance over here. Uh, we've got critical damage. What this does right here, finesse fighting or fighting finesse rather, increases your critical damage and critical healing done by 2% per stage. I'm gaining a 10% critical damage increase or critical healing done. Then I'm also gaining 
Uh, with Backstabber, increases your critical damage done by 3% per stage against enemies you are flanking. So if you are in dungeons, this is going to just decimate because it increases your crit by another 15%. Um, and then down in here with Excluded Might uh, into the uh, Warfare, we've got uh, 10 into Piercing, which gives us Penetration of 350. We've got Battle Master. Uh, which gives us a 60% increased chance to apply our martial status, so like poisons, bleeds, things like that. Mighty grants 100 weapon and spell damage to martial attacks, so basically everything that we're running right now, physical, poison, disease, bleed, uh, that grants us a, a 100 weapon uh, and spell damage increase to that there. Uh, so we gained those three. And then, I feel like I'm missing one. <laughs> Where'd it go? We've got those two. Oh. Uh, increases your weapon spell damage by three per stage. We put ten points into that, which gives us thirty. So, boom. There's that there. And then, over into the red tree. Now, the wet red tree is mainly going to be your stamina mitigation uh, and tanky abilities. Uh, as well as increased health if you wanted to get more health onto this character to make him a little bit more tanky. I went with the free roll dodge because I think that's kind of crucial there. I also went with bloody renewal, so I gained 300 stamina per stage whenever you kill an enemy, which gives me 1,500 stamina back. And then gained 30 health recovery for every 10 ultimate you have. So I really only have uh, a total of uh, three major abilities. I will throw health up there even though it's only giving us 84 minutes. So. Uh, but in order to get these, I also put 32 points into this one here, so it reduces our uh, sprinting speed when we move. Or sorry, increases our sprinting speed when we move. There's one over here that uh, reduces the reduction of your sprinting speed when you have an impaired effect. Uh, but this gives us 8% increased movement speed. I could actually reduce that and put it somewhere else. We've got reduce the cost of blocking, uh, and then we also have grants 280 max health per stage, so we gain another 1120 on that. So let's go ahead and confirm. Boom. So that gives us all of our star powers currently. So with those additions, now without our potion, we are at 48 crit, 32 weapon power. We put on our potion, we jump up to 60 and 38. Uh, and then our health recovery is now at 10, and our stamina is now at 16. So those do help quite a bit. Uh, you'll actually see me fight Short Tusk here shortly uh, with all of that added. Uh, but this build also has a back bar. So let's go over skills now. Uh, so on the main, uh, main bar, our two-handed weapon here, we are doing Surprise Attack, slash an enemy dealing 7,000 physical damage and applying the Sundered Status Effect, which actually helps this ability here in just a second. Attack with a Surprise Attack for the flank to stun the enemy for three seconds and sets them off balance. So if you're in a group and you've got a tank, this is pretty deadly there. Uh, power Extraction, siphon the vigor from enemy's blood, dealing 5318 disease damage to all nearby enemies. And we also apply Minor Cowardice for for 10 seconds, reducing their weapon and spell damage by 215, and we gain, this is the critical part, Major Brutality and Sorcery, increasing our weapon and spell damage by 20%. We have Relentless Focus, focus for one minute, increasing your critical damage and healing by 2% with every light or heavy attack up to five times. While active, hitting an enemy with five light or heavy attacks converts this ability into Assassin's Scourge, allowing you to fire a spectral arrow for half cost, dealing 13,000 disease damage and heal for 33% of the damage dealt if you are within melee range. That's the critical thing. If this is put on your bar and you are a bow user, this will not heal you. Sorry. Uh, we also got Barbed Trap. That's going to give us a little bit more, uh, gives us minor force, which increases our critical damage. So that when we do crit, it does a lot more damage. And then we have Leeching Strikes. Imbue your weapon with soul stealing power, causing your light and heavy attacks to heal you for 1539 health and restore 106 stamina for 20 seconds. 
fully charged heavy attacks restore twice the value. So basically take that times two if you're going to heavy attack with this. Restore up to 4,270 additional stamina when the effect ends based on the length of time Leeching Strike was active. So the longer this is active, the more health you get. If you just, or sorry, stamina. If you just spam it, you're going to get very little stamina back. You're actually going to probably spend more stamina than you get back. Um, obviously, under passives, we are going to get all of the passives for all three trees here, which are going to help all of our abilities. Catalyst here, uh, depending on how, how often you're going to drink potions, uh, you know, uh, that gives you 20 ultimate, which I think is the only passive that you can pass up if you really want it. Under weapon, uh, for two-handed weapon here, we do get all the passives. If you want to be a little tanky while soloing, I recommend getting Brawler because that does give you an absorb shield. Um, and that can go up to 300% based off of how many targets you hit. Um, then under bow, Endless Hail. Uh, that's going to be on our back bar in the tail as well as dark shade piercing mark which gives us uh, the ability to get health back and it gives them major breach which reduces their resistance to us so that we can do more damage to them and then twisting path I have on there that's just so we can get to the target very quickly uh, after we use our first three abilities uh, but get all of the passives there under armor Definitely want to get all of the medium armor bonuses because that's what we want. The biggest one that you want on the heavy armor is constitution because that is going to give you uh, health recovery. And then uh, juggernaut is also a good one which gives you maximum health. We get 4% more increased health because we are wearing two pieces of heavy armor. Um, under light armor, I put the passes in here just for giggles, but there's really not much in here that you need. And we're not even wearing light armor to begin with. Under guilds, fighters guild, that's where you're going to get trap beast. I do get all of the passives here. The, the critical ones are going to be slayer. Increases your weapon damage by 3% for each fighters guild uh, ability that is slotted. If you really wanted to boost this up, you could add, you know, uh, Dawnbreaker in there instead of using our uh, ultimate here. The reason I have this ultimate is because when we use this ability, it puts the Sundered effect on them. And this right here, while slotted, you gain Reed, which restores 100 Magicka and Stamina when you deal damage with a light or heavy attack on an enemy with a negative effect on them. This applies the negative effect. This gives us Stamina back. This gives us Stamina back. So we're gaining a lot of Stamina back just by doing light attacks. Um, but if you wanted to give up that kind of an ability, I would uh, recommend getting Dawnbreaker uh, for that. Uh, and then under Racial, again, we are playing in Nord. We're getting increased experience with our two-handed skill line. That's part of the reason why I went with Nord. But we're also gaining uh, max health and resistance. We're gaining max stamina and uh, ultimate regeneration just by taking damage every 10 seconds. And then increase your physical and spell resistance again by another 2,600. So that is, in a sense, the entire build for the Stamina Nightblade. Uh, it, again, is an extremely powerful build. Uh, other passives that I would recommend if you were doing this as a solo. Obviously, you want to get Alchemy. You want to get the uh, Medicinal Use, which increases your total amount of time. So now your potions will last... About 45 seconds. So, yeah. Now they last 40... Or have a 45-second uh, cooldown and last 47 seconds. So the second they come... Basically, once they're off cooldown, you can just pop it again. But you do have a 3-second... Uh, 2-second... Uh, uh, lead time that you can use that potion again. Uh, other passives. Gourmand. We use food. So Gourmand actually works for us. Uh, adds five minutes to the duration of food eaten. Uh, you can actually get that up to, I believe it is a 20 minute increase. And then you add that to our champion point that we did as well. And you're, you're getting quite a bit of extra time on our food. So you don't have to keep wasting that. Because most foods have anywhere between an hour to two hours. Uh, so that helps there. Um, but yeah, 
So that is the build in general. If you would like to see a different type of build, a different race or class, I am working on several different ones, kind of all at the same time. But if there's one specific thing you want to see, leave me that down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of this build. Um, and again, you will see me fighting Short Tusk. So anyway, guys, I'm going to get out of here. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like, uh, comment down below what you want to see next. And if you're not subscribed, because apparently quite a few of the people that watch my videos are not, please subscribe to the channel. That lets me know that I'm doing something good. Uh, and as always, guys, be blessed, be loved, and as one, we rise stronger and wiser. Peace out, guys.